Good morning, good evening, good night, depending on where you are in this world. Good dawn. Good dawn, good dusk, um, good time to you all. Hello. Hey. Happy to be here. Very nice <laughs> to be here. Well, we got an Australian in the studio. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Was that an Australian thing? Maybe. Eyes of light. It is the return of the amazing, the fantastic, the lovely, the wonderful Casey Ellen Mang Fermanitas. Mm. Give her a hand, folks. How you doing, lady? I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm literally here now. You are? Yeah, you are here. And this is, I think, did we say on Derek's episode that it was going to be like the last one that we did in the studio? Yeah, and then things changed. <laughs> yeah, so we're going to do a couple more in the studio, and then we'll be in our new nice... No, no, we said he'd be the last guest. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, yeah but that ended up not being We're going to be in a nice, new, beautiful gotcha. studio soon. <laughs> uh, but yeah, we had to bring in uh, good old Casey. How long has it been since you've been on the show? What number would this be? This is this is one forty six. So I think it's been like maybe two years. Equal you, you were on a hundred. We were on sixty nine. Yeah, that's right. I thought. I had so th- what? Sixty nine plus sixty nine. One thirty uh, something. Yeah, one thirty eight. If I had so to guess off episodes. the top of my head, probably one thirty eight. You were on a hundred though. I was on a hundred. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm I always, forgot about that. I'm always on a hundred. <laughs> 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 yeah. So it's been a little bit. Um, how have you been? And what have you been up to since the last time you were on the show? I don't, because I don't know. I have no idea. Gosh, I probably should have checked in where I was last time. (laughs) I've been doing a lot better. I've been doing a lot better. I think that my, uh, I'm in a good mental health place right now. Yeah. But we moved to Wilmington since the last episode. Mm -hmm. And that's been kind of crazy. Just kind of resetting life a little bit. Yeah. What's that like? I wouldn't know anything about it. I know Ryan and Jenny are like in the midst of it right now, but like (laughs) packing your house and then moving is like literally. It's brutal. It's brutal. I mean, that that episode was like two years ago. I I feel like you've been through just as much in two years in the last two months. Yeah. That's probably true. Three months. I think that like, especially 2023, I kind of just was like, I'm going to conserve as much energy as possible. So I didn't do a lot. Like in 2023, I was just like, I'm going to sit down for a little bit and just chill. You better lay low. <laughs> you better lay low. <laughs> it's good to do that sometimes. I, I I honestly do that too. Like, I mean, especially when you come off of like a super stressful time in your life, sometimes you just got to like bury your head and get through it. Yeah. Like get in your groove of like the day to day, get into it and just like get through it right now or lately, I, I guess I should say, kind of feels like the polar opposite of that. And I'm almost like looking forward to being able to just like trudge through it again. But um, oh, yeah, you want to trudge? No, no, <laughs> no, 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 not like, no, not like in a bad way. But I don't know, I, like things could slow down a little bit and I wouldn't be too mad about it. How do you like Wilmington so far? I love it. It's just different not being like where I've been for the last ever I don't know. I've lived in Fayetteville the longest. I grew up like up moving a lot. So then Fayetteville is like my hometown, you know? Oh, I, I know. It's it's <laughs> it's it's weird. I've only ever lived there. But I mean, I love it, too. I think this place is cool. And I think there's lots to do here and lots of opportunities. And I love that. I love finding all the things that like I didn't know about Wilmington, even though we've been here for like two months. Three well, months. even saying even before that, we've been coming to Wilmington for years and there's stuff that I'm just finding out about. Mm-hmm. Because I'm now like experiencing it firsthand. I mean, I've lived here seven years, and there's stuff I'm finding out about. Well, there's just so you know? much stuff. There's a lot of there's little so gems much. hidden in this yes. place. There's a lot of good food. Love mm-hmm. that for me. There is good food. Yeah. There the the strawberry patch that we went to the other day was just so Perfect. pretty. It was so pretty. Lewis Farms. Yeah, yeah. Yes, you already Lewis know. Farms. Yeah, it was. If you're gorgeous. in the area, go. Absolutely. Their nursery was like so. It was beautiful. Did y'all get the ice cream? No. Nick no. was like, I'm not in the mood for ice cream. Oh, uh, we were there at like 1030 or something. In the morning? Yes. In the a.m. Yeah. I'm call. just learning that there's a bad time for ice cream. There yeah. is. It's not 1030. You're just learning that? It's not 1030 at the strawberry patch. Let me tell you. Hey, they don't have to agree. That's you agree with me? Absolutely. You got my dude. back? Yeah. There was just so many Ice cream children. at 1030 in the morning? Yeah, no. 
Like, what are we? I ain't doing that. Children? <laughs> <laughs> no. Okay. Here's the thing. We got there at ten. Mm-hmm. Our friends were running a little late. Mm-hmm. I think about fifteen minutes. And we, actually, we got there about ten minutes late. They were running fifteen minutes late. We went through the nursery. Went through the whole strawberry patch. So it was not ten thirty. I just want to say nursery. That. Okay, it was, like it was probably 11. like eleven. What nursery? Thirty. There's a nursery attached to it. Like it has children? like a huge no, greenhouse. Le- no, le- like <laughs> yes. I mean, hey, I've been there. It's cabbage patch. Dolls. I've been there. No, it's like um, they have all like plants that you can buy, like big pallets. Oh. Of them. Yeah, like I where think they you nurse guys. plants. It's yeah. strawberries and daycare. Yeah, no, it's actually the children are slaves oh God, and they're forced to pick the strawberries awful. for the people who come to the. There mm-hmm. was a moment where I was like. They're literally having us pay to do their job. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's, like that's they grew business minded. All the strawberries. And like they would normally just have to pick them and sell them. They're like, what if we sell them to them for more? You know, that's how I feel at like a fondue place. Oh, yeah. Because you're <laughs> cooking. <laughs> pay us $100 to cook your own food. Hey, right. That's like the Korean uh, barbecue and the, and the hot pot place. Hey, that was that's worth good, it. Though. Worth every fondue. single dollar. It was. I sat there feeling like royalty after mm. K pot. And yeah, because we had the soup. We're getting one. Yeah, is it in Jacksonville? Have we confirmed? No, this? no, 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 no. no, no. We confirmed it the other night. Yeah. Okay. We looked it up. They closed down CC's, and it's going to be a K pot. And, and that's crazy. Casey wasn't here for that conversation, dude. We were talking about that the other night when we were doing the Discord event, and Nick was like, "Oh my God, we're getting a K pot," and I was like, "No way!" For like the last six months, I've been thinking in my mind. Never said this out loud. I was like, "Some sort of Korean barbecue joint is the one." culinary experience that this city's been missing period and we're getting it yeah there was a time like a a week or two ago where we were like thinking about something to eat and i googled like korean food and there was there wasn't there's nothing i've even looked like in the facebook groups to see like what y'all recommending there's not really they ain't even got a bulgogi truck or nothing nothing no bulgogi hey i did have bulgogi it means there's a a two weekends ago right where at a vietnamese place (laughs) Oh my gosh! <laughs> <laughs> it was just the grin that you had when you said it. It was um, you know, you, you know, Indochine. Yeah, it's the uh, oh it's God. one of the other restaurants by the same owner. Oh, nice. Yeah, but it's not an Indochine. No, but. we had bulgogi at K Pot. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, it was great. And it was like next level, and I kept ordering it over and over. I was like, more, more bulgogi, <laughs> more. Okay, this more. is this is gonna sound weird, but this is a thing that has happened to me more than once with food where you'll eat food well i will eat food that to me is so delicious and creates such an experience for me that i start getting like like artistic downloads Mm. it's almost like the food is like inspiring me or something have you seen that do you remember the scene in ratatouille yep when he eats the piece of cheese and then it's like the colors and and then he eats the strawberry and is like yeah, yeah, yes, and then yes. It's like he eats them at the same time, and then it's like jazz in his brain. Yes, yeah. that's what I'm that's talking what about. Is. Like the first time I had that um, that Hispanic food truck in Fayetteville. What's it called? I I I. I uh, Takiri. Takiri. Takiri El Refugio. 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 Yes, I'm sure I'm butchering no, that. No, that was really clean for me. <laughs> Good job. I'm proud of you. I'm so proud of you. The first time I had that, my dad had been talking about it forever, and he was like, he invited. You came with me, right? I think he went and picked. He was like, listen, you got to try it. Like, we're going to pick up a ton of it. And then he just came back to the house with, like, literally just bags. Like, yeah, a stupid day, amount like of food. Five big, you know, like the boxes you get. Like, every single one was filled. And we just feasted. And it was transcendent. Yeah. I don't know. That's a, that's a thing that is. Because, like, I don't know. Personally, I consider, like, food to be, like, an art form it can be yeah it, for you sure know, it's it's not necessarily always but i think it can be and it's like something that i've always been super interested in and i find that like my kind of like artistic uh like interests almost bleed into each other or kind of like one will inspire the other in a big way like i'll play a video game that i'm getting really really into Like, I like single player, like story mode, like, you know, narrative type video game. Those are my favorite. Rocket League. No. (laughs) (laughs) Couldn't couldn't be be further from what I'm talking about. Like, God of War. Yeah. Like, I I mean, there's a freaking, there's a, well, I guess it's not on our 
uh, album that we released, but there's a there's a, a different song that is about oh, well, no, League. no, the one about Odin was largely inspired by mm-hmm. God of War. Right. That happens with me a lot. Like I'll I'll watch a movie, I'll play a game, I'll read a book or whatever, and I'll hear music or even sometimes often the opposite. I'll hear music and I'll start thinking of like random narratives. I'm not like even trying to do it. It's not conscious. It's like just coming to me, you know, which yeah, I've always been really interested in like, where does inspiration come from? Especially like, I don't know, being a quote unquote artist, like it's kind of fickle sometimes. I don't even think it's like quote unquote artist though. You're an artist. Okay. Well, geez. Thanks. But I don't know. I, I literally see like direct correlation with my art and food. So like I get it. Well, you, yeah, you make a lot of like food art, which I is, do. which is really cute. And, and I think awesome. that like every, I say this all the time. Like whenever I talk about art is that like art is like a hundred percent unoriginal. Do you know what I mean? Like yes. there's nothing that has ever been said or done that hasn't been said or done before. And like any idea you've ever had is like, born out of another idea that somebody else had given you so it's like all a shared experience so like the idea of being drawn like from one art to form to another it's just like oh it's just bridging the gap between those things it just still it's happened to me pretty much forever it just still shocks me sometimes that like just hearing some kind of like instrumental music i'm thinking it's like making me think about some freaking sci-fi narrative or something you know it's I, i find it really interesting especially when I get into modes where like the inspiration is not coming, that's when, I don't know. I don't know if it's depression or what it is, but that's when I, I'm really like, man, I wish I knew where it came from so that I could like harness it. I don't know. Like, I think it's like your like spirit being cleared. Right. Cause like, it's when you get bogged down by life and like, stress and emotions and like the more worldly aspects of life i feel like that like completely shuts down those like creative channels because you're so focused on like the more tangible objectives in your life like i I have to get this done i have to do this i totally agree yeah i mean yeah personally it it does work kind of like that for me if i'm not in a good place in life like it just doesn't come out naturally but then you then you like see artists where it works the complete opposite for them. Like their best art comes from under pressure. Yes. Yeah. Well, it's it's like like, almost think about like picking like a (laughs) sketch. Do you know what I mean? It's like, if you have to work under pressure, like, yeah, it's great. You can come up with great things, but like ideally you'd like the process to be like not painful or under or stress based. Cause I used to be very much that type of person where like I could not do something (coughs) without stress or pressure. Yeah. Because it was just like the only motivating factor. Do and something make them, artistically, or mm-hmm. really? or just anything that like create like required like uh, a little bit of like brain power. Just anything, anything that uh, effort. Like in high school and like that's like typical ADHD. Yeah. Behavior. I I say that from experience. Yeah. What do you but, mean? What do you mean by oh, that? Oh, it's like, it's just like classic ADHD 101. Like I I don't know how to like condense. And, and say it in a simple way it's like your brain is so hyper stimulated all the time and and casey can can speak from experience yes. it's like you have so many different running trains of thought and so many different focuses and hyper attention in so many different areas that like to do something that requires you to 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 divert your brain power into a specific task that requires some sort of time and dedication and focus it's like you have to be under pressure to use that brain power on that task. Mm. So like me, mm-hmm. I dude, I started making straight A's in college my senior year when I realized I functioned the best waking up at 6 in the morning and doing my homework the morning it was due. <laughs> really? I, yeah. I started making good grades, writing my papers. I'm the same way. The day before they really? were due. Yeah. You're like a last minute. like because, Absolutely. Not because I want to be. Right. No, yeah. No, it's painful. Like, yeah. that's every single thing I did, like, successfully in high school. Like, any project my teacher would be like, oh, my God, this was incredible, whatever. I was doing it, like, 8 a.m. in the auditorium before, <laughs> yeah. like, the class. Yeah. Like, I remember literally, like, editing my video project and, like, my name being called and be like, could you just, like, 
have me go at the end because I'm like in the middle of editing it in <laughs> class prior yeah. to presentation. And it's like, yeah, you can do it with pressure, but like the goal for me at least, and that's not everybody's goal, but for me, it's like, I understand that that's not like a good or healthy way. It's, it's not like, optimal. No. Cause it's like, you're, you're having to like literally use force. Like you're pushing everything out one, one tube whenever <laughs> you think is usually going out in all different directions. Right. The thing about ADHD is having like, intense hyper focus but like not on the things that are external that require you to focus on them <laughs> you know what i'm saying right. no like nick will literally be like we have to clean our apartment because you know our parents are coming over and like we want it to be nice and i'm like literally color coding buttons <laughs> because like to me i'm like this has to get done so, it's all you could think about and he's it's, like what, don't you so see true. the big picture and i'm like this is this is me doing them like, but it's really my, I know now, like the older I get, I realize it's like my brain creating a comfortable diversion. Mm. Yeah, like, that too. Yes. And, and so now like I'm having this um, like internal monologue where I have to say like, okay, stop. <laughs> what are we doing? <laughs> How did we get here? <laughs> what was the goal? I get the, walk it back. I get the whole thing of, by the way, in school, just to, just to, uh, so y'all know where I was in school. I did the same thing with the cramming at the last minute, except I failed almost every class. <laughs> so <laughs> it was like, I was, I was like trying to cram and rush to do it all. And then like halfway through, I'd be like, fuck it. I don't care. <laughs> like, whatever. I'm just going to fail. I was solid middle of the road. Really? Doing like that. between those two extremes. Yeah. And I, the only book that I can remember reading for school was because I got caught plagiarizing a, a book report. Ouch. And uh, <laughs> then she was like, you gave me the book on Friday, said the book report's due on Monday if you want me to not go all the way up to the top with this plagiarization thing. <laughs> yeah. So I read the book in one night. Wow. And, what, what, uh, what book was it? Ella Menno P. <laughs> 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 wait, 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 wait. It was like Catcher in the Rye or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Something everybody yeah. has to know. No, wait. no, it was, it was like Ella, like the name, Ella, uh, Minnow. Like the fish? P, yeah. P, like the... <laughs> Urine. The, no. Oh. Pissed. Like the, like the vegetable. <laughs> P oh. And it was a book about... Um, I hate that. This dystopian society that had this sign, and the sign was like the quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog, right. had every letter in the alphabet. And every this sign was getting old and dilapidated. And they like lived and died by this sign. And every time a letter fell off, you were forbidden to use it in speech <gasps> or text. What? Whoa. So instead of being able to say L M N O P, they had to go into L M N O P. So they started writing to each other phonetically. <gasps> um, okay, but how would you spell Ella without the letter L? I get, I, you know, I, I didn't make the title. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just trying to give you guys a what, what, that what, one now? what age was this? Like what, what, how old it were you? It sounds like a book for children. This was freshman year of high school. What the heck? Mm. Yeah. That's actually a really cool. I had to read the she Crucible. was a very yeah. good looking That's... teacher. <laughs> oh, so for that you? was the problem. No, <laughs> she was actually the, t the, her class was hard as shit and she would give these cumulative spelling tests so that your first spelling test was 10 words and your second was 20 and your 10th was 100 whoa who uh -huh. was yeah. doing spelling tests in high school yeah that's weird <laughs> oh no 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 it yeah. wasn't spelling it was it was definitions <laughs> okay that's different i'm sorry okay. it was it was definitions <laughs> i remember right like, like, this yeah, was kindergarten weird. i remember the fourth grade like okay I yeah, also, yeah, yeah, yeah. the <laughs> last time i spelled <laughs> was probably middle school <laughs> i also got a concussion during this class because it was not just in the class but at the same time period just too many definitions for you, you dude it was <laughs> so high. bad the teacher was I too mean, high he passed out the <laughs> only <laughs> the only one i got 100 on was the first week at 10 what 10 definitions this? i was like i can remember 10 words 10 definitions by 30 <laughs> i was just tapped out I, was like, <laughs> <laughs> I am not committing to doing this so i just kind of guess so <laughs> that's where i shine baby were you was Grill it like a was it like a thing where you had to this is my favorite thing yeah <laughs> was it one of those things where you had to like do it exactly right yeah no. I think oh, it, it might have like been word a, for word I think you had to like draw a line like you had the word and the definition and you had to like like connect the two. Oh, oh yeah. that is so easy or it may have <laughs> the or it may, there were 30 of them <laughs> 
<laughs> but it sounds like you're learning them in like compound time. Like I, I mean, learned it, it 10, wasn't like easy words. And then I learned ten more. And then I learned ten it more. It was tough words. Ella. <laughs> Minnow. Minnow. Yeah. P. Yeah. Piss. <laughs> I also graduated early, failed Spanish, and didn't go to college. So you were in the same boat. Well, no, I'm in a worse boat. I'm in a boat that's underwater. <laughs> Those yeah, are called okay. submarines, and they're cool as shit. Yeah, yeah. I submarines. I failed submarines. math like every time I ever took it. And you know uh, what really grinded my gears about high school? What did you tell me, dude? Tell sure. me what grinded your gears. I had all the math credits I needed, uh -huh. all of them. And for some reason, the last semester, my last semester of high school, they put me in another math class. Wow. And I was conscious to the fact that I did not need this math credit. <laughs> mm. So I did not obtain it. I failed because I'm like, why did you put me in this class? <laughs> that would just I, drag your GPA down, dude. So I showed up late every day. My schedule was so interesting. I had online class, which is not real. <laughs> and who did you have for second period? <laughs> then I had math for second period. Hmm. So math for an hour. And which lunch? Lunch, <laughs> lunch for an hour. And then uh, senior projects for an hour. And then early release. So hmm. I had two classes and an hour lunch for my uh, final semester of high school. And technically I had an online class that I never attended until I got caught never attending and then had to <laughs> come in in the morning and prove that I was taking this online business or like entrepreneurship or something. Yeah. I'm running a business at the same time I'm doing this. What? And I was just like, I don't really care about this class. Y'all probably don't know this about me, but I actually was a successful businessman in middle school. Okay, hold on. The hustler. <laughs> okay, wait, tell wait. me more. Tell me more. <laughs> I, I, I What's used... the name of your biz? <laughs> <laughs> I used to hustle gum. Ex wait, That's what? That's sick. I used to hustle gum. You were like, if you're going to ask for a piece of gum, I'm going to make you pay. I charged a quarter a piece. I made about three bucks a day. And then you could buy. <laughs> you could buy a pack of gum for like $1.50 at the time. So well, you I were mean, like, we were so poor. Like, I couldn't always afford to get like a dollar oh. extra fries at lunch every day. You so I just kind of made the money to get. You made it work. Yeah, hustle, baby. You're like, I'm getting a spicy chicken sandwich. It's true. Did y'all have pizza cart? What? We had a a la carte line. Like it was like you could get slices of pizza, chicken sandwiches, mozzarella sticks, whatever. Okay, but it did you like have pizza cart? No, we didn't have. What is I that? I just told you what we had. Because uh, <laughs> regular school lunch was two fifty, pizza cart ticket was five dollars. <laughs> Dang, y'all yes. had expensive we had, a, we had like Marco's Pizza where you would buy a slice of pizza for like three nah, bucks. This is a Red Baron personal pizza that was about six inches. Different life. Like this big. Their lunch was two fifty. Y'all weren't shocked about that? It was not cut. Ours was like a dollar forty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't yeah, remember that's that? True. That's I could true. be I, I you know, I could be I literally block out those things. <laughs> I <I've> also <laughs> have some lunch. We, my lunch number. I paid attention a lot. Okay, wait. Time. I have the lunch number thing is weird because I came from. Um, when you can't afford the food you want, you know the prices. Oh yeah. Yeah, I came from a uh, ca uh, Catholic school, so they just I just like appeared in public middle school, had never been through a lunch line, <gasps> oh, like shit. lunch number. Nobody, oh, nobody God. took a moment to tell me I had a lunch number. Oh. So I get to the checkout and she's like, "What's your lunch number?" And I'm like, "Excuse me." <laughs> like what are you talking about and she's like what's your last name and she typed it in and figured it out so i just like oh that's all you need your last name and then after about three or four times of doing that she got pissed and was like look it takes me way longer to do your last name <laughs> she wrote down my lunch number she gave it to me on a sticky note she said you need to learn this by tomorrow or you're not going to eat oh my yeah. god i learned that by tomorrow here's the crazy thing about that i keep having a reoccurring nightmare where exactly <laughs> this situation happens. No. I'm an adult woman, 27 <laughs> years old, and I am back at Grace Creek High School. And for some reason, I have to eat lunch there. And I go through the line, and they're like, what's your lunch number? And I was like, you expect me to remember <laughs> my lunch number from high school? I do. <laughs> and like, they will not let me pay regular cash. They're like, no. Do you have the credits on your account? I'm like, I have a debit card. They're like, no. <laughs> I'm an adult. I have a debit card. No. I have a recurring nightmare about school. Oh, I think everyone does. I, I mean, I do. Alex, do you have nightmares about school? Oh, for sure. Yeah. Okay, and it's always yours? high school. Yes. Not no, me. not sometimes me. Sometimes it's college. Sometimes it's high school. Mine? Well, go ahead and flex on me going to college. And yeah. Shit. Hey, I'm not flexing nothing. <laughs> I have an elementary school nightmare where I, this is so random, <laughs> where I show up to my fourth grade class. I don't know why it's that one because I don't even remember the teacher. 
but I know the classroom. Like, I remember what direction it was in the building. And I'm an adult again, and nobody is clocking it. Everybody's just like, <laughs> okay, so where's your homework? And I'm like, I am not supposed to be here. But every time I don't have pants and I'm wearing a jacket oh, as pants, I have to wear that a snow to me jacket. Too. I have that dream. I, I have to wear a jacket as pants. And it's like incredibly embarrassing because I'm wearing that a jacket. That sounds as like pants. a. I think you should leave skit. <laughs> I don't know. When I was a kid, I used to always put my jacket on his pants like around my house. Like to, as, I thought it was funny. And now I'm having nightmares about it. <laughs> <laughs> I have that. I have almost that exact nightmare. And the one that I've had since I was a child, I always have nightmares about my teeth falling out. And now it happened. <laughs> that has a real, <laughs> look that has a real meaning. I think you got to look that one up. Ryan, well, what yeah. was your high school nightmare? Oh, it's just I'm, I'm always, you know, my current age, and I'm, like, back, and I just, like, got one more semester in the dream. <laughs> I always never graduated, and I got to go back, and I'm sitting with all the other kids, and I got to take a math class or do one last paper, or this or that or the other, to graduate because I never graduated. It's like, Are like, you questioning it in your dream? No, I always know I'm an adult, and I'm like, this sucks. Like, I wish <laughs> but you're I not graduated. Like, I know I had finished. <laughs> No. See, that's the thing. I don't ever lucid dream, but in my dreams, I'm in. I'm persistent. Like, no, I am an adult. There's no reason I should be here. But I can never like get anybody to understand what I'm saying. Have yeah, you? There's a frustration to that. Yeah, that's I've, like my I've, whole life. I've been there. What you've had a dream like that in that dream where I'm like, wait a minute. Okay, I'm not supposed to be here. Okay, <laughs> no, it's just like having to constantly explain over and over, and you're like, I'm not crazy. I know I left this school ten years ago. <laughs> Why are we all collectively having that dream? Because school is traumatizing. I think that's Dude, school no. I think yeah. the literal worst. I think that's the truth. I think we're at a similar stage in life, age-wise, right? Mm -hmm. And I think that there's some deep subconscious meaning to that dream, where you're kind of like, think about it. We're in this like early adulthood. Like we're kind of. If are we? Well, <laughs> not me, <laughs> bro. I'm thirty. <laughs> <laughs> well, think, think about it. Like think about it this way. In your early adulthood, early you start. Adulthood, think maybe about this. 10 years ago. Think about this, Ryan. You start high school at around fourteen, fifteen, right? Sixteen, whatever. You've been an adult since you were eighteen. So, if you do the math, you're a fifteen-year-old adult. Okay, wait a no, minute. You're what? A Twelve-year-old adult. <laughs> yeah, no. I, Twelve I've, plus eighteen I've equals thirty. This is weird. I've been an adult as long as I was in school. Right. So you're like, we're at the point of graduating this early adulthood and we all keep going back. Well, Casey keeps going back to elementary school, but <laughs> the, these high school dreams. <laughs> no, the, the pants dream hasn't happened in a while. Oh, that good, one's great. Been, yeah. I remember. I'm some, glad to hear that for you. Yeah. That one's just embarrassing, which like, I don't, again, I don't know why. I don't know why. I, I mean, you have jacket for pants. It's pretty, you know, that's and pretty nobody's embarrassing. Nobody's talking it. Everyone's just like. Whatever. And go to your reading assignment. <laughs> Stop talking about it. No one cares about the pants. No one cares about, about the pants. Your pants. <laughs> I'm sending you home. Okay, this is one of those things where I'm like, okay, do all dreams mean something? Because yes, I, yeah, I think yes, a hundred percent. Okay, here's I ultimately I do. do two. Just to be clear, just to be clear, I all <laughs> just to be I, clear, I, I, I ultimately. <laughs> I think dreams mean something. I think dreams mean something. Sometimes I question too. Just though. to be clear, yeah. I mean, when you have like a super bizarre dream where you're wearing your jacket for pants in elementary school, it, it's sometimes you're like, what? Can this even mean anything? I got no, a question. Ultimately, I know exactly yeah. what it means. I know exactly what it means. What does it mean? Well, I think the pants thing is embarrassing. So it's like that feeling of not like having control and then me as an adult like fighting for control at like a young age where i'm put in this classroom setting of like mm. when i was what 10 at the time in fourth grade that was also when my Nine. younger brother was born so like it's that mm. classroom was like when i became like a different you know like i started taking my childhood a little more seriously because i now had like a sibling to look after so i think i just keep like that dream is specifically like an embarrassment and not claiming my adulthood right mm. i think i know what mine means when i was a let me think about it when i was a junior in college um i had like a b plus in this i think it was um abnormal psychology mm. i'm pretty sure it was abnormal psychology which is like the coolest class it's my favorite I, it it's everybody's plus. favorite psychology it's my class. favorite yeah. what's that like abnormal b plus well in college it's great <laughs> Co grades in college are degrees. harder than high school no i b plus is awesome well, I think I made that Well, gym. you, you got to hear the rest of the story. The last week of the semester, 
uh, my grandpa suddenly died of a heart attack. Mm. And I just never, I mean, grieving, funeral, weight, all this stuff, I just never submitted the final 10-page oh. paper. Damn. And I ended up with a D in the class. Shit. So my dream is always like, oh, my God, I never graduated because I didn't do this one paper. Uh. I didn't get this one credit. I think it's because that was traumatizing. Damn. It probably is something like that. Yeah. So my curiosity is, oh, wait, you were going to ask her something? Oh, I was just going to say when you were in elementary school or, or preschool or whatever, did you ever pee your pants and so, an adult put a jacket around your waist to cover you? No, it's honestly, I think it's one of those things where. Because I did. I had some embarrassing like coming of age moments when you're first getting your period and like you don't know what's going on, like those things. But I think the jacket thing is more like. I used to do it as a kid because I thought it was funny. And now I'm mm -hmm. an adult and I'm realizing it like it's nonsense because jackets aren't <laughs> pants. <Yeah. laughs> and like the thing is, it's not my jacket. It's my winter coat from when I was a kid. You put your legs in the arms? Wow. And Wait, really? You You're a your, twisted sickle You put freak. your legs <laughs> through the armhole and then you button or zip like the back and like hold that up. That's yeah. honestly not what I was picturing no. in my mind. How else would you wear jacket as pants? <laughs> I thought you were like tying it around your waist. Yeah, no. like when you pee in, the adult's I trying to cover it. Yes. Jacket. That's what I'm saying. It's specifically <laughs> this thing I would do when I was a kid. So that's why I think I'm doing it as an adult. Oh my God. I have God. never tried to do this as an adult. I want to make that We clear. should try it. No. Just have clear. you seen? I have like, like tree trunks for legs. <laughs> that's not going to work for me. Here's, look. Here's my curiosity. So these these random, seemingly random dreams pop up out of nowhere, right? My curiosity is like, okay, is it the whole like dreams are messages from the deep thing where you're <laughs> subconscious? What are you laughing at? Uh, it, it, just continue. No, man. no, 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 no. What are you laughing I, at? I just, you really want to know, man? <laughs> yeah. I just was sitting here pleased that we're going down freaking the avenue of the dream theme uh, oh cool. <laughs> dream is part so four. it was a laugh of joy yes it was a giggle of joy and then you bust out the so here's where i'm at our dreams <laughs> really messages from the deep and you hit me with the doom quote oh shit yeah. is that you compelled doom? me to yeah. say why i laughed there's your answer thank you oh, that's a wholesome it was answer. joy <laughs> <laughs> it was joy all along uh so yeah okay so is it like your subconscious is trying to tell you something or is it more like like a result of where you're at in life. Yes. You, you what? You think both? I think oh, those both. are those are yeah. Those hold hands. I think they like they're. It's your mind not having like the the box of your ego, right? Because like your mm. your ego will keep your thoughts in check, but then when you go to sleep, it's like your mind can like start to lace the feelings that you feel ex internally with your like um external stimulus right in an abstract way yeah so it's like i'm taking things that are happening to me stress wise and i'm blending them with like long-term feelings of like associations of you know i associate this place with shame or this with guilt because i'm feeling this in the moment or whatever so it, I, I gotcha so my mind is like a dog and the dog Go lives in the house. Is that why you're scratching your nether region right my now? My mind is like my a mind dog is like a dog because and the, do and and the, the dog, dog is out lives in the house. And then when I go to sleep, the dog goes out and just gets after it in the yard. You know what I mean? Wow. Sure. I mean, I think that's the a thing, dream. I think the thing that is like your dog goes and undigs all the skeletons that you buried in the yard. Ooh. Yeah, no, no, and then, be doing then, whatever. But then your dog puts them all away nice and quietly, and then you wake up and you're like, that was weird, I swear to God, no, I no, thought no. the dog was out last <laughs> night. <laughs> no, you know what I think? I think the dog goes and digs up all the bones and then sorts them and puts them in order. I don't know. Maybe and if you're the having dog a be sorting it out, getting it out in the yard, maybe, you know what I mean? Maybe he's putting his toys in order He's getting his energy out. He's get he's got some walking around money. And <laughs> you're talking no, about No, I, I get what you're saying though. Like your dreams allow your subconscious mind to play out scenarios in which you would like otherwise not do. Like you know yeah, yeah. your brain is running a little bit more free. Oh no, I see that. That's yeah. all I'm saying. I don't have a very healthy relationship with my dreams, so like that's something I did try to focus on for a little bit, but it's it's kind of fallen off the radar. Because I just feel like a lot of my dreams are very stressful and like Oh, that's what you mean by you don't have a good relationship with your dreams? Yes, I'd usually try to forget them because of the amount of stress that they cause me. You'd ha you would say huh. you have more like nightmares or like stressful dreams. Oh my than God. <sighs> I, like almost every dream I've had basically in like the last six to 
eight months has been like, I am at a large event at a large building. Uh huh. And like, it's so crazy. Cause I, when I tell people about this, I like, I have maps, I can draw the buildings out. <laughs> That's something that really freaks me out about dreams. Like, is that the places that exist in dreams are like real places to you. But then when you think about them outside of dreams, you're like, that's not the way my parents' house looks. Mm -hmm. Or like, mm -hmm. that's not the, I didn't have the, that type of locker in high school, like, or things like that. And it's like, so the details are always off. It's always off, but it's always the same for me. Like when I come back it's consistent. to it's consistently wrong. Yeah. Isn't that weird? Right. It is weird, which that kind of stuff like leads me into the whole realm of like dreams are a place. Yes. Mm -hmm. Which is such a freaky thought. Right. You ever have a uh, combo houses in your dreams? Yes. Yeah. Like, like you open a door and you're in someone else's house. No, no. I mean like it, maybe it's got the living room of your parents' house, but the bedroom. Oh of yeah. Your yeah, house. yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Right. Totally. Yeah. I yeah. have a lake house that I have in my dream a lot. I haven't had that dream probably since like 2018, but like the lake house is so familiar to me and no, nobody in my family has ever owned a lake house like i've never lived in a lake house no nobody it's just it's like this is my family wait a minute but you kind of did live yeah, on the body you, of water yeah i mean it's different though <laughs> it's like it in the house is very narrow it kind of rem like reminiscent of my grandma's house like because it's very tall but it's not like any of the houses that i've ever lived in the inside is very different and it's like on it's almost like if what i imagine like white lake would be like like just like a little pond that's pretty big here's another weird thing that i've been noticing lately because ever since we moved here um we mostly casey but I, i've been i've been doing it some too you, you've been sky watching a lot a yeah, lot i think ever since we went to azalea fest i have yeah we could talk about that too, because you didn't get it. This is the really good stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, you don't want to talk about? Ask. You don't want to talk what? about high school anymore? <laughs> <laughs> you no, gonna, no, no. I was, yeah. I was going at an opportune moment. I was going to ask about some of your recent sky watching. I don't know. I've always had. I, I mean, I've had a lot of sky watching experiences with your family specifically, and it's always been with your family. Mm -hmm. So I always thought it's them, right? Mm -hmm. But then, like the more I talk to you guys, that's very some like something you make clear. It's like it's not us like it's the fact the relationship that we have but it's not like nobody else besides us can experience it you just have to be open to experiencing we it. just had a head start on like figuring it out and understanding it mm -hmm. and the connectedness that you have right which i don't think everybody experiences that part of it because i think i i i don't want to be like rude right but there's a lot of people who are like i want to see i want to see and it's like desperate it's not like a cloying desperate thing it's like you just look and then you get excited and then they're there and like i don't know it's not something you should feel so like downtrodden or like beating yourself up against we've like, said that's, it a hundred times it, it makes like the it makes it such a tainted experience because it's like well it's not like it's we, almost like you're using them yeah it's like almost like a like an ego boost like what's wrong with me mm -hmm. like nothing yeah. there's nothing wrong with you it's the attitude and that's what i was experiencing for years was that like i wasn't seeing them by myself because i had an attitude about it specifically that i thought okay, well, I'm maybe too close-minded or I'm this, something's wrong with me and that's why I don't have these experiences. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But then I think I realized at some point that it's like, it's not like you have to be a special person. You just have to be like, chill. I don't know. You, you just have, have to, to just, be open to it. You have to like, re like resonate joy and like happiness and like have a good positive attitude about it. Going out there with like a stricken mind where you're like, they're not going to show up because they never show up. And that never, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. That's what like, I think people get into that mindset when they're specifically trying to see something. I mean, if you called me up and you were like, hey, let's hang out. But, you know, you probably don't want to hang out around me anyway. And you might as well, <laughs> you know, would have a bad time. And you probably shouldn't come because you don't want to be around me anyway. I, I probably wouldn't get in my car and drive over there. <laughs> right. right. <laughs> I mean, that's a good analogy. It's just it's that Selling simple. Selling yourself short, yeah. you know. <laughs> and so I think that that was something that I took away from Azalea Fest was that like, they do really resonate to joy, like the excitedness that everybody mm -hmm. sees. Um, I don't know if you guys ended up talking about like the beach because I didn't. End up yeah, we did we a did. whole episode. Yeah, yeah, the like in that big flash that everybody saw, mm -hmm. and it was like a, f a tangible moment where you could feel just like the energy was like ah. Yeah, I, I was, <laughs> was kind of hoping that we could hear some of this from your perspective. Yeah, I mean that flash was. There was two flashes that I saw. So the first mm -hmm. one was the night before when you guys Saturday were still night. in Charlotte. Mm -hmm. And that night we were just all standing on the road and it, 
you know, usually when we do this, like Chris will just say like, oh yeah, it's probably going to be like 8.30, whatever. And I've always thought like, how do you know? Mm. It just does. So then we're like looking up there and I don't remember what happened. We were seeing a lot of stuff, just like, you know. Tons of stuff. There was all kinds of stuff. stuff. Yeah. And then it was like almost to the moment where you felt like everybody was on board and we had a couple hecklers, like a couple people (laughs) walking by just, you know, Ooh, what are you staring at? Yeah. And I think everybody had a pretty positive response and, mm-hmm. you know, we even had some people stop and like watch with us for a while. Mm-hmm. And I think everybody was just like at this good point where they were like, all right, we're doing this. And it was like at that moment, I don't remember, but I think Corey specifically was pointing out to Zeke, like, yeah, look over there, look at that one. And then like, because she said it, everybody was looking, you mm-hmm. know? And so we all looked and then that one just went shh, like mm-hmm. really bright and yeah. flashed. And buttons. everybody went, whoa, just like on Sunday night. Mm-hmm. Everybody yeah. went, whoa. And like me and Jenny, we'll go to the beach and we'll see stuff like that. But we can tell the difference between like a shooting star. And like that was like a bright, long flare. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like it, mm-hmm. it wasn't like a phew. It was very slow burn and then it came out. Well, and the craziest part is you're watching it. As and it looks like a normal orb. We were already tracking it before that. And then all of a sudden it just flares and it's like, you know. If 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 the first moment when you saw it it was bright and then it went away, it might be a little different, but you're following it with your eye and it's pretty dim and like seems far away. And then suddenly it's like five times as big, five times ten times as bright, and it's it's shocking. It's like so shocking. The the reason I I brought it up is because I I don't know if you guys have experienced this, but I feel like almost every time I have some kind of sighting, I have very vivid dreams like that night. I, again, I have a really, really like different relationship with my dreams. So I think that's yeah. like part of my subconscious being like, oh, maybe we're not ready for that because there's a lot of there's a lot of chaos going in there. But I understand that. Like, I know that's an issue for me and that's something I'm working towards future but Mm -hmm. as of present i'm like it's fine have you thought about like as you're falling asleep at night like meditating on having good dreams um not specifically good dreams but i have been getting back into meditating like before i go to sleep and that might be a good like intention to set whenever i go a lot of my meditation focuses around like my adhd because it's like about turning off my mind and like allowing myself to fall asleep um and like i've been doing a lot of meditation focused around like patience because that's something i just feel like i need to grow in Mm -hmm. um but like i said it's kind of one of those things where dreams for me has been like a a back burner issue do you know what i mean and i've like even sometimes stopped and like okay i'm gonna take this more seriously but then life just gets in the way right yeah it happens i didn't have any dreams though specifically after that incident well it just it's just something that i've noticed happens pretty like somewhat often is like i'll have a really vivid dream and then later that day i'll be thinking about it and be like wow i I had a sighting last night and you know whatever um another thing i was going to ask is do you have you like thought about a pinpoint reason as to like why you felt more drawn to going outside because these days casey spends pretty much every night like almost every night well that would be (laughs) outside (laughs) a lot of it sky watching um I got really depressed when I first moved to Wilmington and it had nothing to do with moving. It was just like, you know, yes, there'll be this moment. And I hope that like you guys are able, like, you know, everybody handles it differently, but it's like a moment after all the chaos where you're like, well, it's like you're going a thousand miles an hour and then you crash to a stop and you still feel like you're going a thousand miles an hour. And I'm supposed to be happy and I'm supposed to be excited. And everybody's like, how excited are you? How happy are you? And you're like, I'm, I'm, (laughs) lost i i feel like i'm like in a daze and that got me very depressed um and then like just being at the house all day i was like oh god so like getting out has been a good you know i had to i basically told nick probably about two or three weeks into us being here like i'm gonna need some help Mm -hmm. (laughs) like i'm not doing well um and that so for me like part of that was like getting out staying outside um azalea fest was like really good because it was just like a very social event and it kind of i don't know like i rode that wave of like joy i don't know i just felt joy Mm -hmm. after that experience and i kept that has been sitting with me still to like to this day i still feel so much joy from that me too yeah it was a huge pick me up and so then like seeing i think seeing the flash there seeing the flash on the beach you know we were seeing all kinds of stuff um and then coming back from that 
uh, it just kind of like led me to want to think about it a little bit more than I usually do. Mm -hmm. Usually I have the experience and I'm like, that was cool anyways, like next time. Mm -hmm. But I was like, you know, if I'm serious about like wanting to understand this phenomenon more then I need to like maybe take it a little bit more seriously and stop putting like a boundary in my way of saying that I'm too science brained or like closed minded to experience this thing Mm. so I kind of just treated it as like a relationship where I was like okay if I want this to happen like I need to be invested in it so like going outside and being like okay I'm gonna just get excited about seeing them and just you know maybe even praying or like for me prayer is mostly just like all right this is what i have to you know this is what's going on right now and like this is what i need and this is what i want to give in exchange and so like after i think after like maybe that azalea fest ended on sunday i think it was maybe the tuesday after Mm -hmm. it might have been the thursday i don't know we have receipts somewhere (laughs) um i went outside and i was just like it was it was friday Okay. Could yeah, because you too, were remember? you were at the bachelor. Yeah. Oh, that's it right. Was the yeah, yeah. Following that's right. Friday. Yeah. So I was just like, I don't remember what it was. I was just like, if this is gonna be okay, like the feeling that I was having off of going from that weekend, yeah. like if we're gonna continue to like move forward and like there's a lot going on politically right now. There's a lot going on in the world. There's a lot of stress. And I was like, I felt so much joy from this weekend, and then I feel so much heartbreak from like when I step outside and get back in the real the world. The world around you, yeah. Right. I was like, I just need to know that it's gonna like this is gonna persevere, right? That was like like it's that that this the good will overcome in that mm-hmm. way. And I was like, I would just love a sign. And so then like I saw a little, not even like twenty seconds later, that was the first one that I saw that I text you guys about. Yeah, and Ryan is is. Three hours, hours away. away, hours away, and at the same moment saw one, in the yeah. s- by the moon. Yeah, I saw one up by the moon. I oh, really? Y'all m- saw like it was like similar. They were both by the moon. Yes, yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah, now, that is impossible with us being hundreds of miles away. Completely for it yeah, to have been something. Yeah, you were in Virginia. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, and I'm in Wilmington, so it's like how, and I wasn't even gonna tell anybody because I was just like, okay, like I don't want to like get like oh look at me i'm a hot shot like i saw my own orb i didn't want it to become about me you know i wanted to like this was something i asked for and i don't want to like oh guys look what i did yeah. I, yeah so i wasn't gonna say anything nick was like say something so then i was like okay i'll text and then i text the group and then ryan's like i just saw one too at the same time at the same place so i was like <laughs> are you kidding me see, i think the opposite is true i think when you see them it's important to share that's why they come in the first place they want their presence to be known Oh, no, I definitely agree. Like, after sharing that with you, then I was like, oh, well, I should tell people more when this happens because it's exciting, one. And I think it, like, still fuels that fire for me. Like, I get excited to continue to do it. Yeah, yeah. No, it, it, it's like when I am seeing orbs the most frequently is when I'm in a place where I'm, like, w- uh, effortlessly excited and curious to see them right like it's when not i'm not consciously thinking about it all the time mm-hmm. i'm not thinking about like man i you know i should really go out and sky watch tonight and like i really want to see orbs tonight or anything like that it's like driving down the road late at night and just happen to look up into a spot in the sky and there it is right where mm-hmm. i happen to look right you know it's not it's not like an active seeking thing it's like this whole experience, every aspect of it is all about letting go of the outcome. Yeah. Right? It's like not expecting a certain thing to see, not expecting it to make you feel some kind of way, not expecting, you know, just just not having expectations set in stone because in my experience, every time I have had like a rigid expectation or something, I don't see anything. Right. Oh, no, I definitely feel like it's like almost like I feel like my brain's forcing it. Like you have to show up now. Yes, exactly. And that's like not fair. First of all, like if somebody expected me to do that, like, hey, where are you? Show up, do something, (laughs) make me entertain. I'd be pissed. I'd be annoyed. (laughs) And it's like a bratty attitude to have too. I think that's like one of the things that like goes hand in hand with me practicing patience is that like me sitting and sky watching has been kind of a meditative thing for me. Like that's part of my Mm. meditation is that like. I will just sit there and look 
and I'm like part of it's practicing like not getting too antsy or like not expecting much or not and like I can hear in my mind when I'm doing that like just wait five more minutes Mm. just do this for five or ten more minutes Mm -hmm. and then I'll see something within five or ten minutes because it's like it's asking me just to be patient and that's what I feel like that's like why I started doing it more was because I felt that those two things needed to like be they, they started feeling they went really well together yeah this lessons and patience and the sky watching yeah it's almost like it's like a reward for your diligence or your dedication you yeah know. like I was waiting I don't know I was I, the first I don't know if it was the first night I saw them or if it was a different night but like you would came outside mm. and I remember sitting there thinking like Nick's gonna come outside eventually but I wasn't planning on it I was just thinking like he'll come outside I'll just wait and then he did and then like literally the second it came outside we saw like this orange bright light which all the ones I had seen that night were blue I didn't see anything orange nothing Mm -hmm. orange at all like blue or like light white you know what I mean yep that color and so just blue (laughs) (laughs) and um that one was bright orange and it was so slow and it was so much lower than the rest of them it was like a totally different thing than what I had been seeing because it just went yeah it was pretty like big looking too it was big and it went over like the roofs and it would duck down and it was like i i got excited and i was like come on now like what you do and <laughs> it would just pop back up and then like go a little bit farther and duck back down that was a weird one because it felt like it was like playing hide and seek with us it felt very childish mm-hmm. like, or yes like a kid i don't know it felt like very youthful energy like different than the ones that i was seeing later at one point it started going back the opposite direction that it came from yeah it was like hopping around it would like go up above the trees go back down go up and then it was going left and then all of a sudden we saw it going back right and it kept ducking down like that was a really weird one yeah and i hadn't seen anything even close to that like nothing that interactive that whole night but it was just like the fact that i sat there and waited because i knew you were going to come out Mm -hmm. and then as soon as you did we had like a really crazy experience together yeah and and that was another thing i just thought about is I haven't really considered this until this point, but it seems like they really appear or I see them a lot if I'm in a place in life where I'm like very present. Mm -hmm. Like, which is something I kind of, I do struggle with. Like I've always kind of struggled with feeling present. Like I have, I, I don't know. I don't remember when I talked about it, but I did recently where I, I often feel like very ungrounded and like the other night on the discord event. Is that what it was? Okay. Yeah. I, I feel like my head is in space all the time. Like, you know, anyway, those moments where I feel kind of like lost and confused and not grounded. I almost never have experiences or see stuff or, but then if I'm in a place where I'm uh, like present and even, you know, if I'm like doing good with, meditation and gratitude and stuff like that that is when i see them it's like it's like this delicate like dance of when you when you have because i struggle with depression and like when you it's like this delicate dance of getting yourself out of that state of depression doing good, taking care of yourself. And then that's when you see them and you love seeing them and it makes you feel good. And it, and it's like a, I feel the same thing I feel when I have like synchronicities. Mm -hmm. Like it's like a sign, like everything's good. You're doing good. Stay on the path, like that kind of thing. But then it is that, it's that dance because then when things are going good, then I don't want to put the work in and I don't want to like, take care of myself and i'm like oh everything's fine now everything's good and then it goes right back into that like cyclical depressive like it's not working kind of endless work (laughs) yeah yeah what was that documentary called that we watched oh i can't recommend it now really is there some jonah hill (laughs) oh oh oh, yeah 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 that's true but the it's a it's a therapy doc produced by jonah hill yeah yeah. (laughs) it was a fantastic documentary and that was one of the things incredible oh yeah that was one of the things that they said that like was a rude awakening for me it it was just a very simple thing he said which is that life is constant work yeah he said there's constants in life endless work suffering and like the passage of time Mm -hmm. he's like those things are always going to exist and like if you if any version of yourself 
or any of your ideals exist where those three factors aren't in play, then you're striving towards goals that are like, um, they're unreachable, Mm -hmm. right? Yep. Because at any moment, even if you had a picture perfect life, like all the things that lead up to that picture, that snapshot, like a, a single moment in time, you know, there's stress, there's time, there's work, there's things that all go into that. Like, there's never going to be a time where everything is perfectly balanced. It's like, a yeah, it's just not realistic. It's a game of like spinning plates, you know, many are called, but few are chosen. That's what Jesus said about how to enter the kingdom of heaven. Or it's like um, something like easier for the camel to pass through the eye of a needle. Mm, you know, yeah. it's, it, the point is, you know, it takes constant work and focus and diligence stay on the path of you know self-perfection i used to get really beat up when i would get depressed again like that would be the big thing because i go through like very constant cycles of depression right and it's like when i get really depressed i'm like how did i get here like what did i do like i was doing so well like rather than noticing that it's me stumbling and having that patience for myself to say like what do we got to do to get you on pack like Mm -hmm. on on track you know well it's hard to have the foresight or the strength to even pull yourself out of that when you're in it that's how i've been you can't pull yourself out of a hole that's the progress though that like that's the joy in my life is the moments that where i am feeling low and i can have compassion and empathy for myself still and be like this is just a low moment for you like girl you are not going to break down today because like what you had a couple bad things happen like Mm -hmm. we are not gonna let this ruin you like this is not you know this is not how we're gonna fall apart today you have to have compassion for yourself and be like yeah okay great this is so human for me to have this cycle like i'm ankle deep now like (laughs) let's figure (laughs) out how i get out of this and like not be disappointed that like it's i guess it's not a step back it's just like a step it's a step forward that maybe just doesn't look like it's elevated, I guess. It's a side step. Yeah. Like going back into that cycle is not like anything wrong with you or like a downfall on your end. It's just like, that's part of life is that there's, Mm -hmm. you are constantly going to go through these like different cycles in life. And part of that is like having low moments and like, I don't know, experiencing joy like that after the Azalea Fest and like riding that wave, you know, and then you come back down and then you have to like remember that like i have to be grateful to have those highs even when i'm in my lowest lows like i have to remember that those moments feel good yeah exactly that's what it was like growing up seeing this phenomenon when nobody else was seeing it and judging us and mocking us and ridiculing us but we're seeing it at night and having to remember like no we're seeing it they're not Mm -hmm. you know what i mean yeah like that's exactly what it was like all this time i mean there was a time where people weren't just so regularly seeing it you know and yeah and now years. look at now look at like your life now where there's like groups of strangers traveling across the country to like across the planet to look with you and like do to have that experience with you like they they believe you so much that they are like willing to stand by your side in public like, you know what i'm saying it's like so it's so beautiful and right. i know that it's still like very um like it's still a wound that you had to experience and that we're getting like a joyful side of it. Um, but I think like you almost have to look at it as like you laid down the foundational work for everybody who follows the podcast to like have these experiences. Yeah. The more I reflect on it, I think, I think the work that we're doing, I think we talked about this on the Azalea Fest episode, but I think that the work we're doing is more important than we ever realized. Yeah. You know? oh, yeah. Like, oh my God. People who listen to the show, you know, a hundred what are we on 147 now 46 146 146 episodes plus you know 52 episodes of full disclosure a year as of last week hearing all of this context and all of this stuff plus reading the book plus you know watching xyz stuff is like now all those people i feel like they they get it and they're going out there and they're seeing it yeah and they're seeing it and they're they're choosing to spread it because of how it helps them in their own lives. Right. Because so many people, it's just life is hard. It's very hard it, for everybody. It's not easy for anybody, period. And this phenomenon is, it just gives you something that is a reminder that there are things out there that are bigger than you, smarter than you, and more. It, it's just... 
it's like something to aspire to. It's, it's something right. to comfort you and show you that like everything is fine. Like this, sometimes it feel like, feels like everything's crashing down and you have such limited time and whatever, but it's like this reminder from the infinite that like, dude, don't, don't worry about it. Like, yeah, there's a grand design to it all. Yes, exactly. That's what I mean. Like there's a, yeah, there's a, there's things in the works that are far beyond you that, that are going to ensure that everything is okay. Right. You know? Oh, I truly believe that. Like, that's like my mantra just to like get through the day sometimes. It's just like to tell myself that like I'm taken care of. I, I learned, I'm sorry, I didn't no, mean to cut you ahead. off, but I learned that's what faith is. It's not about like, oh yeah, I have faith in God. Like, you know, some people could say they have faith in God, but in reality, I think that's more like a knowing Ex like yes. You either know yes. God is there or not. Yes. The faith comes in when you're having the hard time, the bad day, you're at the low and you're like, are you going to help me or not? Yes. 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 I have faith that you will. Right. Right. It, I know you're there. Yeah. Are you going to help me or not? Yes. I know you will. That's the faith. Yeah. If that makes sense. And I think in the area that we like grew up in it, the whole like faith versus knowing thing often is very confused like i think most people where we grew up kind of feel like faith is just knowing right that god is real I right like I faith growing up in church that like faith was always described as like you being willing to buckle down and just accept it like yeah yes yeah yes. you're gonna weather the storm you're gonna have to go through hell and go through the <laughs> valley of death and then you'll have your peace but it's like i don't know it always was felt like don't expect too much don't mm. expect good things you know god's gonna take care of you but you're also gonna have to suffer like <laughs> yeah it did and like the like faith that. was like just you know it was like pinned such in a reverse way it's like despite the suffering you better like it where it's like no that's literally what it is like despite the suffering i still feel joy i still yes. can like you know Alchemy. one of the something that i did right around your birthday um last like your 30th birthday last year is i started doing this practice where like um, when I was having very like joyful moments in my life, I would like physically do something to kind of track it. So for me, I always just like did this little thing on my chest. Cause then it's almost like I'm checking it. Right. Mm. Like for somebody who experiences depression, when I'm in the lows of it, I have so much like resilience or, or, or I'm, I'm so resistant to like be grateful. I, I would rather, oh, yeah. I would rather feel like, woe is me. Look at my sad, pitiful life. Like, and so that was one of those things. Like when we were at your birthday party, I was around like all these people I loved having the best time, just feeling pure joy. And I was just, you know, remembering to track it. And it was like, you know, maybe four weeks later I was going through a depressive episode and I just remembered I did that and I could feel the joy inside of me. It was like, just remember that you can be grateful despite you know, like I, I was able to tap into an experience where I was like, I know life is good because I felt it in that moment. Mm -hmm. And it's just yeah. like, I try to keep track of that uh -huh. rather than like allowing those things to go by and not feel grateful for them. Yeah. What else are, are great moments for other than to like w remind you that life can be great when you're in the shit? Yeah. And also sometimes we just have to give up and understand that like there are natural forces, external forces that grind against us and not every day you wake up is supposed to be a great day. Yeah. You, oh yeah. yeah. That you took me have a bad, long time to realize. You have to have bad days to have good days. That's just how it works. You yeah. I think my ego it. will get in the way of like that, that taking it personally, like this is some sort of like attack against me and like, like punishment. My, me trying to get better. Like wh why is this happening to me? Mm. And like, that's, that effort of like no you know that you feel joy you know that you felt happiness like this is not like a attack against you it's just the equilibrium yeah. yeah i've always like felt that like especially when i'm feeling really high in my life like i'm like wow this is a great moment for me i'm succeeding i'm being like on the top of my game i have all these things going for me and then when i don't have those things going like everything's going wrong i try to now phrase that as like uh this is for this is time for somebody else to get those blessings like the equilibrium is shifting out you know maybe yeah. it's not my time to thrive but like 
I try to at least see around me my friends and the people close to me maybe it's their time to bear fruit and I'm you know having to give a little bit more of my resources or my nutrients so that I can survive until I can bear fruit again but I can't like strip myself or like take that away because it everybody ex- deserves to experience joy even when I'm in a low moment so yeah. it's, it's trying to give perspective like and also it will pass oh yes. my god please remember that if yeah. that's what <laughs> please remember that it it it's so momentary like time is so fickle and like you might feel like you are in the pits right now but like dude two days from now you could be on the high of your life and be like what was i even (laughs) thinking back then (laughs) absolutely i you know i've experienced a lot of points in my life where i'm like i can no longer move forward this is you always do yeah but i do we always do and i'm always grateful that i do and then I hold on to through that. Mm-hmm. There's always something to live for. There's always a reason to try and shift and be positive. Like it's it's never too late. I have literally seen people turn around from the brink of death. Mm-hmm. You know, whether it's drug addiction or cancer or whatever. I mean, yeah. it's never too late. And another point is when you saw the orb by yourself that Friday following the Azalea Festival, you were literally praying to the heavens in whatever way you you know, phrase that as you're no, praying that's, to that's the accurate. heavens for a sign about the state of the world. And you got your sign. I think it's important for the people out there to understand, like you're not born into this world to bear the pressure of the state of the world, yeah. everything out there. And that you know, burden is too big for one person. It's, it's the allegory of Atlas. Yeah. You have to like detach yourself from what's going on out there and, and out there in the world. I'm not saying don't have compassion and be like, you know, thousand yard fluoride stare right. and be a zombie. I'm not saying that. Right. I'm just saying you have to focus on the good and spreading the good and shun fear, radically reject fear, radically reject judgment of other people, no matter, you know, where they come from or what they're into or what they think. And just understand that, like, there is a grand plan to everything. You can go back and you can listen to episode 17 of the show, which we recorded three years ago now. We've been saying it all the way back then. If you believe the lady even occurred, if you if you have a shred of a thought that that even actually happened and she actually had a message, the message was that this negative state of the world is going to build and build and build and then... Poof, it's, it's going to change. Gonna be fine. It's going to change. Yeah. yeah. We're, and there's going to be a new order to things. And, you know, there's there's going to be ultimately a positive outcome. Yeah. We just have to have faith, have faith, keep our head forward. I and couldn't do it if I didn't believe that. Right. You know what I'm right. saying? Yeah. yeah. We just have to be positive. We have to not be, ju- you know, just because everybody else is out there saying it's the world is terrible. It's falling apart. Oh, my God. Well, you know, maybe to you, mm-hmm. but not to me. Mm-hmm. It's not to me. I go outside and I. Talk to this guy and poof, I see lights and you go outside and, you know, there, there, there's there's a lot to behold that is glorious and is positive and is full of love and light. And that should be the singular focus, the, the, the thing that our awareness is constantly pouring into is that 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 infinite just point of love and light and awareness and positivity and just radically reject fear. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. I do have a lady story. I don't think I told you about this. Share it. I, I yeah, no I know idea. I told your father about this. I think I told Nick about it. But I did have like an orb sighting. I've been go after that first night. I've been going out like pretty much every night for the most yeah. part. I think the last week I've kind of slowed down, but you know, for the most part, every night I go out for even 10, 15 minutes just to see if, if I see anything. Well, it's warming up too. It's just nice to sit outside. Yeah, it, just look at the sky. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. (laughs) So I just sit outside and I enjoy just looking at the stars, even if it's just that, like getting to be familiar with my, what, what it looks like outside, you Mm -hmm. know, in my new neighborhood and everything. And I had a night the other night where I was feeling very emotional and I was kind of almost feeling like a little bit, um, like I was kind of pushing the boundary of what I was, I should be saying to these people who are listening right like almost being a little bit uh what's the word where you're butting up against something Mm, butting up against something i was kind of pushing back (laughs) a little bit like all right well then do this Mm. well then do that like being a little bit testy which i shouldn't have right with the orbs 
Yes. Okay. Because I, I was just, I just, you know, I'm on one, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> you just start getting into your head. And I, I remember just again being told like the, the message that kept coming in my brain, it was like, just like, just chill. Just, just sit here. Just sit here for like 10 minutes. What are you doing? Like you're doing too much. <laughs> like it was just this constant reminder and it was very friendly. It was a very calm, just like a voice in my head just being like, no, you're fine. Just wait. Just be patient. Stop asking for so much. And when I was sitting there, I don't know if everybody experiences this, but I have really poor eyesight, especially at night. And when I look at things in the darkness, like I see like a lot of uh, noise around them. Like streaks and, and like, like almost like an aura type, like it's glow almost just around like, things. It's like white noise. It's like seeing like dots constantly. Hmm. Right. So like if I, when I was a little kid, when I would look around my room at night, the dots would turn into like huge monsters and like when i was laying in bed or something like the the white noise i could see shapes in them and i always thought it was just like me being a a nightmarish child or whatever <laughs> like being struck or stricken um but that's always something i've experienced where when i look at darkness i see like noise and so like i see an orb and it's going so slow and it goes all the way up and i'm leaning back and like looking on the porch like up and it's like I felt at that moment like the world had stopped a little bit because it was just very faint. But then all the noise around it started to form the shape of like a woman, like a lady with her arms out. Hmm. And it started flying and it was going so slowly and I could feel it like just the, the outline around the noise was like almost like just somebody just like kind of showing up being like, Here's what you wanted to see, right? <laughs> but the funny thing is, I was like, but I'm not seeing it. Oh it's only God. me seeing this. Like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. I knew it was my eye seeing it. And it. I was looking up at it. And once I realized that, like, I had been looking at it for a couple minutes, there was just tears streaming down my face the whole time. I was just like, it's almost like I cracked open and just, like, just tears were welling out of my face. And so I was like, okay, that was, you know, she wanted me to just be quiet and listen so I did and I, I sat there and I listened and eventually like the shape kind of just like went up and I could see like the bottom of the feet and it just went up in the sky and then the orb disappeared and I felt like okay that's a little kooky for me but whatever so then I told your dad about it because I was like yeah it was really weird and he's like yeah you saw that because she wanted you to see that like yes. it wasn't even supposed to materialize as like here's me a tangible woman but like it was given in a way that like you asked for it mm -hmm. here you go yeah which it was funny because i was like yeah well i can't prove that to anybody <laughs> yeah. i know but that's again that's my brain fighting it right. and like that's what i think the whole point of me having response. that experience and that sensation was that like hey science girl you're not gonna be able to prove <laughs> this to anybody you can't point to this and say look at the look at the white noise around the shape but like I know it happened, and I have to like sit. It was on just that. for you. Yeah, it was just for you. It was a beautiful experience that you had just for you, and it did for you exactly whatever it needed to do. It filled me with a lot of peace. Well, there you go. That's beautiful, and and yeah, I've been having a lot of fun sky watching, and I hope we keep doing it. Love it. You keep saying science girl, but you're actually a very right brain person. Well, she was in the science Olympiad. She competed. I love science, though. I'm just saying, like, just, just knowing you, you're a very right brain dominant person. Yeah. yeah. I think there's a part of my brain, especially growing up in church, that, like, always wanted an explanation, right? And that, to me, was, like, well, science is an explanation, right? You ask a question, then you get the answer, whether or not it's what, like, that's what science is, is the, the practice of asking questions and getting answers about how things work. Right. Yeah. So for me, like, I always approach religion in a scientific way where it's like, well, what's the hypothesis? How can we prove that that's real? <laughs> what do you got that's proved that this happened? And I, I think that was a big gate for me getting more spiritually close to where I am now because I, I let that be a boundary to say like, well, I'm not open to it because I need an explanation. Yeah. And once I let go, like I'm sitting in public and in, in downtown Wilmington, there's just like 20 people and it's just happening. I just let go and you have to realize those things. Like that just doesn't happen. You have to be comfortable with the fact that you will not know. You will not get answers. That's called being exactly. humble. Yes, yeah, being and that was and what it. Faith. That's what it was. Is that I was bucking up, yeah, and trying to like bring my own ego into it, and I was kind of humbled in a way where like you're gonna see something, but it's not gonna be something you can explain to anybody, yeah, because <laughs> it's gonna be white noise and it's gonna be for you only. But you're gonna see it, like, 
Yeah. And I, it, I don't know. It definitely gave me like a little bit more perspective. Like, all right, kid, don't, <laughs> don't ask for so much next time. Well, you're you're a very special person, and it's happening to you for a reason. It's it's happening. Who, me? For, it's happening for a reason. <laughs> Thank you. I love you. Thank you for coming on again. Don't look at me like that, girl. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for coming on again. I hope you had a good time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did. Thanks and, for having uh, me, boys. Of course, of course. You know how we do it. You ready to do it? Oh. <laughs> Bye, guys. Bye, guys. Bye. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. If you want to see more, check out our other videos. And before you go, don't forget to subscribe. See you next week. Peace. Peace.